How's it going, people? I've had a, an invigorating day, a restorative day. I woke up late. I drank too much coffee with breakfast. Hung around the house. Read a chapter. And then I went and explored the forest behind me. Came back, worked on the sink. <sighs> Put it around the house. Had a nice lunch. Took another walk in the woods. And here I am, five hours later, in the same spot. Uh, and I'm going to read another chapter. Because I'm sure some of you are having trouble sleeping. Have a little single malt. It goes good with literature and spot and everything else. That is nice. Where am I? I am chapter four of In the Twinkling of an Eye. <sighs> so, we finally had some shit happen. It's all rather contrived and forced, but you know, that's God's plan. Everything is unalterable. I mean, unless you pray real hard or get a bunch of Facebook likes, which, I mean, I think a thousand equal uh, one prayer. Is that how they do that on the internet? Uh, something like that. Okay, well, chapter four. I only reaped what I sowed. And uh, that must be uh, because of, uh, what's her name? can't find it right now. Anyway, oh, Joyce, Mrs. Joyce, the sewer side, sewer side lady. She only reaped what she sowed. Hammond awaited the woman whom he had saved from drowning. Is that that Tom Hammond or a different Hammond? She has slept fairly well, the landlady told him, and I made her eat a good breakfast that I carried up to her myself. <sighs> oh, Mr. Hammond, that's who she's talking to. Now, he waited to speak to her a moment or two more, and the landlady ushered her into the room and slipped away. <sighs> How could I ever repay you, sir? cried the woman, seizing the hand that Hammond had held out to her. <sighs> For a moment or two, her emotion was too great for further speech. Hammond led her to an armchair and seated her. <laughs> He's full service. <sighs> she sobbed convulsively for a moment or two, maybe, maybe two. He allowed her to sob. Presently, tears came. <sighs> so emotional. The proxasm passed. The tears relieved her and she lifted her sad, beautiful eyes to his face. 
I wish I had some violin music going on right now. But instead I gotta settle for whatever I can find in the public domain, which is what you're hearing. <sighs> you know, oh yes, you must know Mr. Hammond. Did his long pause and then in parentheses. Uh, I recognized you last night in parenthetical, still in dialogue, presumably. How I came to be in the water. I tried to take my life. I was miserable, despairing. God forgive me. His strong eyes were full of a rare tenderness. As he said, But Mrs. Joyce, you surely know that death is not the end of all existence. I am not what would be called a religious man. But I was indoctrinated as a kid. That's almost as good. Uh, but every fiber of my inward being, the same one that won't shut up when he's musing to himself, amusedly, like in the last chapter, all right. tells me that death is not the end at all. Not. Yeah, that death does not end all. Ain't that a bitch? <sighs> Damn that immortality! After you're dead. Just doesn't end. He saw a shiver pass over her, and she hoarsely replied, I do rip realized that this morning, Mr. Hammond, but last night, the madness of an overwhelming despair was upon me. Prozac, that's all you need. Maybe a little counseling. You'll be fine. Or you might, you might consider Scientology. Just kidding. All right, unless you're fond of giving your money away. <sighs> My life had been a literal hell for years. Until yesterday, I could bear it no longer. I was famished with hunger, sick with despair. And she sighed wearily. Perhaps she went on. If you knew all I had borne.